a rhino calf stranded in floodwaters in Kaziranga. And a picture of another rhino seeking refuge under a hut in a village in Assam. These two images give you a glimpse of the situation of the northeastern state of Assam. Floods here have spared no one. Both humans and animals are in peril. Heavy rains have triggered flash floods across the state after the river Brahmaputra breached the danger mark, inundating several villages. Look at these visuals. In a heroic attempt, a resident of Assam's Dulyajan town in Dibrugar district risked his life to rescue a drowning calf. From the smallest calf to entire communities, the deluge has disrupted lives. The Brahmaputra River, which originates in Tibet, flows across India in Arunachal Pradesh and Assam before running through Bangladesh. It overflows virtually every year. This year, more than 2 million people have been affected in Assam while more than 68,000 hectares of crop area is underwater. 58 people have lost their lives this season. Adjacent to Assam, even in Bangladesh, the flood situation has worsened due to continuous rain and upstream water flow from India, leaving another 2 million people marooned. In Nepal, at least 62 people have been killed in rain-related incidents in just one month. The Bagmati River, which separates the cities of capital Kathmandu and Patan, breached its banks, inundating the residential areas around the river. Before flowing through the Madhesh province of southern Nepal, the Bagmati River merges with the Kamala River in the Indian state of Bihar. And then there's the Koshi River, the sorrow of Bihar, the eastern state of India. It too has breached its banks in Nepal due to heavy rain. The water level in the river has continued to rise with incessant rainfall for the past few days, prompting the local administration to open all 56 sluice gates of the Saptakoshi Barrage located in Nepal. <laughs> Bihar, which is already witnessing monsoon havoc, is now staring at a bigger problem. The state is now on high alert as massive floods sweep through swaths of India, Nepal and Bangladesh. Bigger questions linger. Why do these regions have to face flood wrath every year? How can better flood management avoid disasters year after year? Can there be a transboundary solution to stop these deadly floods? A boat moving through the floodwaters of the Brahmaputra River in Morigao district. It is looking for a safe zone for an emergency that perhaps it was not prepared for. Under this blue tarpaulin put on the boat, a medical team is helping 25-year-old Jahanara Khatun deliver her baby. Within 10 minutes, the baby emerges to shouts of celebration, drowning out the noise of the motorboat sailing over the river. 
at least 28 districts have been hit as the water level of most rivers in the state continue above the danger mark. Humans, cows, goats and animals all are living under one roof. No one is getting anything to eat. There is no water to drink. The flood water is saline. We can't drink it. There is nothing here. These men in the boat are going to the market to procure something, but no one has money either. We have lost our belongings. They went away in the flood. We came here but couldn't find anything. I bought a canvas to make a tent and we are living under it right now. The flood water has now entered my house. The water has damaged my paddy and crops. I have a family of five and I have to take shelter here. If the situation worsens, I will lose my house. The floods cause a lot of problems to people. Many houses have been submerged in water. What can we do? It's very difficult here. This is the plight of the people of Assam. Several rescue missions have been carried out in the past days to take people and animals to safety. So why does the Brahmaputra swell to such an extent every year? Brahmaputra means son of Brahma in Sanskrit. While most rivers on the Indian subcontinent have female names, this river is known as India's only male river. The mighty river starts in the Mansarovar Lake region near Mount Kailash in Tibet and is known as Yarlung Sangpo River there. Known as the upper stream, it flows for about 1,625 kilometers before entering India through Arunachal Pradesh. Later, it flows through Assam, covering a distance of about 916 kilometers in India, and then it enters Bangladesh, where it is called Jamuna. It merges with the Ganga River, which is known as the Padma in Bangladesh, and becomes the Meghna before emptying into the Bay of Bengal. With its vast network of rivers, Assam is prone to natural disasters like floods and soil erosion, which hurts the state's overall development. Almost every year, three to four waves of floods ravage the region. The average annual loss due to floods in Assam is estimated at 200 crore rupees or 23 million dollars. Now, if you look at the course of the Brahmaputra, you can see the sudden turn the river takes before entering India. It cuts through a succession of narrow gorges as it turns southwest. The growing volume of water and silt flowing down through the Brahmaputra, originating in many of its tributaries from upstream, is blamed for the flood. And then there's this. China's mega dam over the Brahmaputra worth $1.5 million, the Zangmu Hydropower Station. This dam has raised serious environmental concerns for India and Bangladesh. Analysts have warned that China's ambition to control water in Tibet can have devastating effects, be it shortage of water due to weakened flow or floods due to excess water that China releases. If more water is released from the structure during monsoons, future flash floods could become a more frequent site for places downstream in India and Bangladesh. On the Brahmaputra, it has built a series of mid-sized dams upstream, but now it's building a it's building a super dam, a super dam just before the Brahmaputra enters India. Now this super dam will be almost three times larger than the world's current largest dam, the Three Gorges Dam. And this super dam will have cas cascading effects 
on downstream communities in India and Bangladesh. This will have a bearing on the climate system, will have a bearing on, on the stability of weather patterns, but also will affect rivers. It will damage rivers to very seriously damage the ecology, the ecosystems of uh, rivers yeah, yeah, like the Brahmaputra, the Mekong. Another northeastern state, Manipur, has also been ravaged by floods. Several places in Manipur's Imphal West and Imphal East districts were inundated after incessant rains. Two major rivers breached embankments. Bangladesh is in the middle of its annual monsoon. Every year, the season brings South Asia 70 to 80 percent of its annual rainfall, and with that, flooding and landslides. The South Asian nation of 170 million people, crisscrossed by hundreds of rivers, has seen more frequent floods in recent decades. It has 57 transboundary rivers, out of which 54 flew from India and the remaining three from Myanmar. This year, thus far, about 2 million people have reportedly been affected by floods, with at least 8 people dead in the country. As the Brahmaputra, known as the Jamuna in Bangladesh, burst its banks following heavy rains. Due to torrential rains and upstream flu, all rivers in Tangel have risen, resulting in flooding of low-lying areas, leaving thousands of people trapped. The Jamuna and Jhenai rivers are flowing above the danger mark, leading to river erosion in several areas. The overall flood situation in Jamalpur has deteriorated due to the hilly downpour from upstream. Footage from the country shows broken bridges and dams, while villagers waded in knee-high waters in Jamalpur. In Bogra, water in the Jamuna River continues to rise at the Sarya Kandi point. Currently, over 17,000 people here are trapped in flood waters. The government has opened hundreds of shelters for people displaced and sent relief to badly hit districts. Around 23,000 people took shelter in 3,000 shelter centers and around 2 million people have been directly affected by this flood in 19 country districts. Now the flood situation is improving and the flood water is receding in some places, but it can inundate the lower land more because this water comes from the Himalayas in Nepal through India and falls to the Bay of Bengal. According to the 2021 Global Climate Risk Index, Bangladesh ranks seventh on the list of countries most vulnerable to climate-related devastation. It says that by 2050, one in every seven people in Bangladesh will be displaced by climate change that includes floods, cyclones and drought. The country may lose approximately 11% of its land by then, and up to 18 million people may have to migrate because of a projected 50 centimeter sea level rise. Another South Asian country, Nepal, routinely faces landslides and floods. Severe flooding in the capital city Kathmandu this year has waterlogged streets, homes and vehicles have been partially or completely submerged. Residents had to wade through flood water to go about their daily tasks. 
As of the 8th of July, at least 62 people have been killed after heavy monsoon rains triggered flash floods, landslides and lightning strikes in the small Himalayan nation. Dozens of people were evacuated to safety. It has been raining since yesterday and people have been forced out of their homes. There are children and people with chronic illnesses. This is not new for us, but the timing is wrong. The flooding triggered by heavy rains started early this year in July. The water level has reached up to our knees. If the rainfall continues the same way, then we will have to run for our lives. Major rivers across the country have been flooded, leaving many settlements at high risk. The Narayani River in Chitwan and Rapti River in Banke have crossed the danger mark. All 36 sluice gates of the Gandak Barrage at Tribeni have been opened. As water crossed the danger level in the Narayani, a major river system in central Nepal. Also in Lumbini province, water crossed the danger mark in the Rapti and Babai rivers due to heavy rain in catchment areas. In Kosi, the country's biggest river system, water flow reached the danger mark. As it has been raining continuously in the hill districts of Kosi province over the past few days. The Kosi River, which flows through Tibet, Nepal and India, is known for its instability. It carries large amounts of silt during the monsoon season and often changes course, causing devastating floods. So, how can this be avoided? Several of the Ganges tributaries flow into India from Tibet through Nepal. Now, if China is willing to be transparent, it can share real-time hydrological data with Nepal and India. By doing so, it will help both Nepal and India to deal with floods. Because if you have advance warning of what is coming, if the flows in the river are going to be, are going to be seriously augmented, then downstream Nepal and downstream India would be ready to deal with the surge. Incessant rainfall in Nepal has affected the Indian state of Bihar, which shares its border with Nepal. The rains have raised water levels in several rivers across North Bihar, with some rivers reaching their danger mark. The Chief Minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, recently undertook an aerial survey of the districts of West Champaran, East Champaran and Gopalganj to assess the floodwaters that have spread into low-lying areas. The Gandak River has emerged as a particular cause of concern. With over 440,000 cusacks of water discharged from the barrage at Valmiki Nagar in West Champaran, the river was flowing above the danger mark at Dumaria Ghat in Gopalganj district. Around 400,000 cusacks of water were released from the Birpur barrage into the Kosi River. While the Kosi River, also called the Soro of Bihar, has breached the danger level in Khagaria district, the Bagmati and Mahananda rivers cross the danger level in the Muzaffarpur and Purnia districts, respectively. Bihar recently witnessed 12 bridge collapses over just 17 days, prompting the administration to initiate steps for proper upkeep of bridges. The Bihar government also suspended 15 engineers for negligence. Experts also point to poor materials and inadequate supervision. Political leaders demand accountability, while heavy monsoon rains are also cited as a contributing factor. From Uttarakhand that is currently witnessing several landslides, <laughs> to 
to the financial capital of India, Mumbai, that experienced the heaviest rainfall in five years. From Rajasthan to the northeast, the monsoon rains from June to mid-September bring widespread death and destruction across South Asia. Experts warn of the rising impact of climate change that is increasing the intensity and unpredictability of monsoon rains in overwhelming our rivers and making them uncontrollable. Year after year, the monsoon season witnesses disasters. How long till we become climate prepared and manage these record-breaking floods?